if I may put it in somewhat mythological terms, a great supramundane Buddha known as Amitabha, or in Japanese as Amida. And the story goes that in incalculable ages in the most distant past, this great Buddha made a vow that he would not enter into the state of complete Buddhahood until any human being upon the face of the earth who pronounced his name in faith would after his death be reborn in the western paradise over which Amitabha presides and find therein far greater ease of spiritual development of awakening, of becoming a Buddha than is to be found on the face of this difficult earth and all this of course derives from the ancient India, uh, Indian idea that the present epoch of the world's unfoldment is the darkest of dark ages called the Kali Yuga and in the Kali Yuga or the Mapo as Buddhists call it it is peculiarly difficult to advance towards any kind of spiritual development because it's an age of decadence the end of which will witness the total destruction of the world prior to its re-manifestation at some future time And therefore, the story goes on to say that this great Buddha, Amitabha, did in course of time attain to complete Buddhahood, signifying the fact that his vow is fulfilled and that anyone who simply repeats the formula, Namo Amitabhaya in Sanskrit or in Japanese, Namo Amitabhuts, which is roughly translatable in English as the name of Amitabha Buddha, or Namu is used in the formula is used in Sanskrit or Japanese somewhat as the French say and nom dan nom dan nom where they just say name meaning hail I suppose in English we have no real equivalent of it but the idea is that anybody who repeats the name of the Buddha Amitabha in perfect faith will without any other effort any other kind of spiritual endeavor on his own part however evil however depraved he may be he will be reborn after death in this spiritual state in which the task of becoming a Buddha is rendered so easy as to be, as we should say, a perfect cinch. And of course, all commentators on Buddhism say, well, this of course is how religions degenerate. They become popular, pie-in-the-sky selling organizations where absolutely nothing is required of the faithful except an occasional contribution and the easier you make it in contrast to the other sects which make it more difficult the more people will flock to your following the fatter the contributions will be and it all ends up with the prayer wheel where all you have to do is make the thing revolve you don't even have to think about it and incalculable supernatural merits are stored up on your behalf But it's very dangerous to jump to conclusions of this kind about this type of religious or spiritual manifestation. Because in practice, the Shin school of Buddhism has had some of the most remarkable adherents and produces a type of personality which is known in Japan as a Myokonin, literally translated Myokonin, means a wonderful and fine man that's just a literal translation which doesn't at all convey the sense of this kind of personality the Myokonin but the Myokonin a man like Shinran himself who founded the Shin school of Buddhism in Japan is a man 
who has in a way understood the profounder meaning of the doctrine of this school. And perhaps before I talk about the personal characteristics of the Myokonin, I should try and indicate what may underlie, what may be the deeper meaning of this seemingly uh, decadent, highly popular and easy form of Buddhism. Perhaps the best way to do this is by means of the critique which this particular school uses against those who follow the other way, who follow the way of jiriki or self-power. The followers of the Shin school would say that a person who attempts to make spiritual progress by his own efforts is battling against the worst possible obstacle to any progress at all. And that is that in thinking that he can do it himself, he's like a person trying to lift himself up by his own bootstraps. Or to put it in another way, he suffers from the pride of imagining that his own will, his own energy, is sufficient to change himself. After all, if he needs changing at all, it is precisely the character and the motivation of his own will and his own energy that needs changing. And how is this change going to be achieved by that very will which so stands in need of change?